Hi, yes. this is Penelope. This is FS3128, Topic 11, Class 2, where we're going to look at a use for the integration techniques that you learned in the previous class. Now, remember in the previous class and previous video, I said we were talking about indefinite integrals. So an indefinite integral is something simply like that, where we've got a function, and we're going to integrate it. Now we need to start to move towards making this thing, this process, a little bit more useful. So we introduce the idea of integrating between limits. And the answer now is going to be a number. And what we do is we do the integration as step one, and then we substitute in b, the top number, we substitute in a, and we then subtract. Let's have a look at an example. Let's find the integral, and we read this, between the limits of 1 and 3, of 3x squared plus 6x plus 8. And I've done the integration, and I'd like you to set it out like that, with square brackets and with the limits um, at the top and the bottom. Now, the question is, why is there no c? Ooh, I've tried to impress upon you that every time you do integration, you need to write plus c. Well, Let's put C in and see what happens. I've done the first step of definite integration by finding the integral, and now I'm going to put in 3. So if I said in here, okay, we've got plus C, let's be good, and put in plus C, then I'm going to put in 3, so I'm going to have 3 cubed plus 3 times 3 squared plus 8 times 3 plus C minus 1 times 3 plus 3 times 1 squared plus 8 times 1 plus c. And now, everything else aside, when we come to do the subtraction, we've got c minus c, and the c's have all gone. So when we are doing definite integration, there's no need for a c, no need to put it in because it disappears. Oops, it says in C, not ink, because it disappears under subtraction. So now we just use our calculators or our brains to work out the first bracket. That would be 78 minus the second bracket, which is 12. So the answer is a number. At this stage, it doesn't really mean anything, but the answer is 66. We worked example here, the integral between 3 and 1 of x squared. We integrate. Now I've put the c's in there, but... That's just to make sure you completely understand why they disappear. You integrate, then put in, substitute in 3, substitute in 1 and subtract, and we get our answer. So let's do some slightly more complicated functions. So, let's get my calculator. So we're going to first up do the integration itself. So it would be x cubed plus 7x. And I can leave out the C because it's going to disappear. I know that it's going to disappear between 1 and negative 1. So that's going to be 1 cubed plus 7 times 1 minus negative 1 cubed plus 7 times negative 1. Now please, you've got the fx 82 AU plus 2. Do it in one calculation. So later on when the things are a little bit less than accurate, we're not rounding several times. So just do it in one go. So I'll stop the video and find the answer. Of course, I could have worked that out in my head. The answer is 16. Now, the first part of the process is easy. The second part of the process is very easy to make a mistake. So just be very careful. Second one, I'm going to do the integration first. So it would be e to the x 
and the integral of 1 is x. I'm going to put in 1 and 0. So big brackets, e to the power of 1 plus 1 minus e to the power of 0 plus 0. Now it's very tempting to think, oh yeah, that's 0 in the right-hand bracket. It's not. Remember that e to the 0 is anything to the 0 is 1. So we've got e to the power of 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 0. So our answer is e to the power of 1. And e to the power of 1 is 2.7. Etc. 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 Now, really importantly, for reasons that you'll understand when you do a bit more maths, you need to have your calculator in radians, not degrees. So make sure now to do this one that your calculator is in radians. So shift set up number four. So now you're in number four. And it's a good idea when you're doing calculus to always have your calculator in radians. So we're going to do the integration and the integration is going to give us 1 over 2 then the integral of cos is sine and we're going to do that between pi by 2 and pi by 4 now I can take the half out the front because I could have taken it outside my integration sign so now I'm just going to find sine of 2x between pi by 2 and pi by 4, giving you a final answer of negative a half. Do it all in one in your calculator. I haven't got room there to put it in, but do it all in one in your calculator. For those of you that have got the new edition, it's exercise 35, 36.4 rather, and the page number is 472. This is to be done in class, not now. Okay, now we need to start looking at using this thing. One of the things that we can use it for is to find the area under a curve between a couple of x values. And it works provided what the area that we're looking for is above the x-axis. So if we're looking for a shape like this, looking for the area in there, we can use integration to say that the area is equal to the integral between a and b of that function, provided it's above the x-axis. That's really important. Because it's really important, we need to, at every stage, draw a graph, just a quick graph, of what it is that we're finding the area of, so that we can make sure we don't have anything underneath the x-axis. So for this question, it says, find the area bounded, well, funny word, but never mind, bounded by the curve that's given to you, so it's part of a parabola, the x-axis and the lines x equals 1 and x equals 3. So it's going to be the area in here between 1 and 3. And quite clearly, all of the area is above the x-axis, so we're fine to say that the area is going to be the integral between 1 and 3 of 3x squared plus 6x plus 8. So first step is to find the integral. Plus 8x. Now I can change that. Instead of being 6 over 2x squared, I can change that to 3x squared.
Now it's a measure of subbing in the numbers. So it'd be 3 cubed plus 3 times 3 squared plus 8 times 3 minus 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared plus 8 times 1. Do it all in one go and you get the answer of 66, which is what we did in the previous example. But now this means something. It's an area, so we need to give it a unit of some sort. It's no problem to find the area under a straight line. We could divide it up into two shapes. We could have done it like that. So I could have found the area of the rectangle and then the area of the triangle because we've got rules that allow us to find the area of regular shapes. But where we don't have regular shapes, then we're going to have to use calculus to do that for us. For the first one, we can say that that's going to be a rectangle. Okay, we need a bit more information. We need that that number there is 3 because that's the y-intercept, and we know, need to know that the number at the top is going to be 7 times 2, 14 plus 3. So that number there is 17. So the area will be the area of the rectangle, which will be 3 times 2, which is 6, plus the area of the triangle, which will be half times the base times the height, which is 17 minus 3, which is 14. So that's 6 plus 14 which is 20. But we can't do that with the other one. The second diagram is, is not a regular shape, so we need to use integration. So first up, look at the diagram. Is anything underneath the x-axis? Nope. So we're fine to use the theory that says that the area is going to be the integral between 2 and 5 of x squared. So we do the integration, it's going to be x cubed over 3 between 1 and 2. So I could take the third out to make it easy for myself. And then I need a bracket, so I'm going to have put in 2 and put in 1. Run it right through in my calculator and get the answer of 39 square units. This time, let's look at something a little bit more interesting. Let's say I wanted you to find the area underneath the curve x cubed between negative 1 and 1. Now, if we weren't thinking about it, we could just say that the area is um, the integral of that is going to be x to the 4. We're going to do it between 1 and negative 1. Put in, oops, over 4. Put in 1, so we get 1 to the 4 over 4, minus what we get when we put in negative 1 to the 4 over 4. And we get 0. Clearly it's not true. Clearly there is area there. The reason we got zero is we failed to notice there was some part of the area that was underneath the x-axis. So this defined area, when we've got part of it under the x-axis, is wrong. What we have to do then is split it up. We have to say, okay, it's okay for the bit between zero and one. That's fine. We can proceed as normal. But for the bit that's between 0 and negative 1, or negative 1 and 0, we have to take the absolute value of that part to flip it to being positive. So now, as before, we do the integral of this bit. And we're going to have to add the absolute value of the integral between negative 1 and 0. Now, I'm going to, normally I'd say just work it right through and write down your final answer, but just I'm going to show you now the difference. Previously it was a quarter minus a quarter. This time it's a quarter 
plus a quarter because we've taken the absolute value of that second part so our area now exists and it's half a square unit which makes much more sense than having a zero area when clearly the pale blue area is there again not to be done in class this is going to be exercise if you've got the new edition exercise 36.5 and the page will be oops page will be 477 but that is to be done in class